I should be in this video holding Adam Lambert's hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, Cardi B's part, like I am not a hater. I like Cardi B. Uh, her part in the song sucks. Someone's gotta say it. Hey friends! And, <sighs> hey friends! I had someone say that I need to address my ADD. So here I am addressing I don't have ADD. I've never been diagnosed. So thank you so much for that. I'm just kidding. I'm half joking. I'm actually here because this morning on Instagram, I have to fix my hair. Maybe I do have ADD. That could be a thing. Hold on. No, that's not any better, Lauren. Ugh. I hate having hair. I hate it so much. I hate it so much. Okay, this is gonna have to do. This is gonna. Be, this is gonna be the situation today. Hey, friends! Welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to be here with you guys, sitting on my floor, answering questions, doing what I do best, and that is sitting on my ass. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. This. I woke up this morning to 3,000 subscribers. My hair is still terrible and it's really bothering me. This morning, I woke up to 3,000 subscribers, which is so beyond my wildest dreams of whatever I thought I was gonna ever do on YouTube, and especially in such a short amount of time. But since there are so many new people here, I was like, Lauren, you need to like catch people up because it's been so long since I've done a Q&A and I had maybe five questions last Q&A. And now I don't, I have a lot. So I asked you guys on my Instagram, which if you're not following me on Instagram, my name is Lauren Brazy, just like this channel. And you need to go there and you need to follow me. You really don't need to, but you know, we would love to have you there hanging out with us and stuff. Yeah, ask the lap, ba doop da dee guys to ask me questions so now we're gonna answer questions right now before I waste any more time complaining about my hair or complaining in general let's just get right into it because I feel like you guys have some really good questions so love the way first question I need to get to this post question is from country cooking mama I'm a new subscriber and I haven't seen all your videos DVD host yet so excuse me if you addressed this already. I was wondering if your daughter also does lazy keto. I heard it's good for kids with autism. Does she eat the same as you and your husband? And if she has, have you seen improvements? Ella does not eat keto. She has had some keto things. Um, yes, I've heard about the magic pill. I get, I have not watched it because I get really weird when people bring up the word cure for autism. I, it triggers me somehow. Not that they claim to have a cure for autism, but yes, I have heard that keto works for autism. Ella is a very very picky eater like she will actually go on hunger strike and not eat for days so it's not like a typical child where you can just like kind of wait them out and hope they'll like grab whatever's on their plate that's not ella so yeah we've given her keto options no we haven't seen a difference with any kind of diet change we've tried in the last however many years um i totally appreciate that question though because i know that's a big hot topic in keto right now and especially having a child on the spectrum and being keto myself, I should be like, yeah, she eats keto. She's not going to eat keto. Like, we actually don't have her on a lot of dairy in general just for um, constipation issues. So, oh, she does not eat keto with us. I, I kind of wish she would because then we could all eat the same things all the times, but all the times, we can't talk. But she's not and we're okay with that for now. Uh, we're just trying to get her to try new things slowly, vegetables, things like that. So. We're one step at a time. Uh, WT6188, can you eat yogurt on keto? If you can, what brand and kind can you eat? I do not eat yogurt on keto. I think there are a few people who do eat yogurt on keto. I believe the FIO 0% is the lowest carb yogurt. Um, another keto channel on here, I forgot her name. Keto in the Chaos, I believe is her channel. She eats yogurt pretty often and she's lost a ton of weight. So. I would say yes, WT. Color outside the lines. Hi, Alex. Hey, girl. Uh, so proud of you. I know sometimes you just feel very unmotivated. I feel very unmotivated with keto. It's not often, but sometimes. Um, what are your go-tos for inspiration? If you look at a certain person's page or maybe your own or even read some keto transformation stories. That's a great question. I, My go-to inspiration is my friend Amanda. She has lost over 100 pounds in a year and she looks incredible and she just overall is her best self. 
I also really love um, my own transformation, which sounds super egotistical, but I really do. I love what's happening to my body, so I tend to like look, I'll do side by sides. Anytime I'm feeling like bingy or weird or like I'm not making progress, I like will take a picture of myself and put it next to a picture I took five months ago and it just kind of brings me back. I also really, um, I would, I don't follow any specific keto pages that I'm like, oh, like Keto Transformations is really good. That page in general is good on uh, Instagram. They have like side-by-sides and I love that kind of thing. But I've noticed a lot of the keto community on Instagram, which I may get hate for this, I don't know. Um, they tend to be super clicky and not funny and like super serious and judgy and all of the those kind of things and I don't really care for that so I try not to like I don't know I haven't found anybody yet so if you guys know any great keto people who are nice and funny and supportive and kind please put them down below in the comments because I would love to find that kind of thing going on on Instagram I would say like real life people that I have in my life right now who have done keto and are successful on keto, that is what inspires me. My friend Priscilla who's losing weight on keto, Asa, her husband is losing weight on keto, Amanda, her husband, me and John. Um, I have so many people in my, like, my world who are eating this way and are seeing results and that is so exciting. So that's usually what keeps me going. Also, I feel like this channel keeps me super um, motivated and accountable so that also helps a lot I'm gonna fix my hair one more time see Casey shrink my question is with the way you do lazy keto and not tracking macros do you just keep tracking your head or do you use an app I just keep tracking my head I used an app for about a week and it made me bingy that's I don't even know if that's a real word but it made me bingy and I can't do that for myself, so I usually just keep track in my head. I know what has no carbs. I know what has carbs. I've been do eating this way for long enough that I know about where I'm at approximately as far as carbs go. I don't ever really track my fat or my calories. Um, I only usually eat two meals a day, and I don't eat a ton, so I don't feel like I necessarily need to yet. I feel like there will be a point in time where I'm going to have to kind of dabble with strict keto and counting calories because I mean after you lose a certain amount of weight you're gonna change something up so I'm kind of uh, I'm going to have to go that way soon enough but I think if you can track and not get super obsessed and like hard on yourself with tracking go for it I think those apps are great I think they're helpful I just don't personally use them for myself don't be on the stick I pee on should it be moderate for the fat burning or as long as it's ne not negative or trace, I should be good. So confused. Okay, my understanding of the ketone strips is moderate is great. That's where you want to be for fat burning. Um, if your stick is darker, that means you're dehydrated, but you're also burning fat and you're um, releasing ketones into your urine. Trace, I would say, step your fat game up. And if you're not showing any ketones, then you might be fat adapted because sometimes that happens. If you have been on keto for a while, you may not like release ketones in your urine you might be using them so I would say you're good if you're in moderate you're, you're good you're solid this one is from Brittany Johnston yes she's so sweet funny fact about Brittany I had no idea that she was married and I knew her previously like in middle school I think we had like a brief amount of time where we were like besties like you know gym class besties not like bestie bestie but still besties I didn't know, I thought she was just like a subscriber or like I didn't know and then I realized like oh she's friends with people like I know in my hometown and then come to find out it was like holy crap I know you so it doesn't matter. Hey Brittany and I love that you love my videos and like that we were able to connect again and she has questions. Do you have something big planned for when you reach your goal weight? I do. I'm going to go to probably Islands of Adventure or some sort of theme park and ride every freaking roller coaster there ever ever was ever a bunch of times that's my number one goal and then do I exercise seldom <laughs> not really I should be exercising more but I don't yeah oops and do you plan on having any more kids uh, oh what's funny with this whole hormone imbalance I've had going on 
I've had a couple like pregnancy scares, not really, because like I've mentioned, I have the implanted birth control and all of that jazz. But John was overly excited um, about having another kid, so I'm assuming that we'll probably have another one. Ah, I can't believe I'm putting that in the universe. Maybe eventually. Yes, I'd like to have another child. Whew. Well, that's that. Yeah, I would like to have another kid. I'd usually say no, but I think I would. Not right the second, but eventually. I'm still 28, so I think I have like one more year. <sighs> Deep breaths. Thank you for your question, Brittany. Not sure if this has been asked, but do you ever include alcohol in your way of eating? Very rarely. I don't like to drink because it makes me feel terrible. But um, I have noticed when I do indulge in alcohol, um, I lose a bunch of weight right after. So yes, and if I do drink, it's like um, Tito's vodka or like whiskey of some sort that have no sugar in it, Diet Coke or like a seltzer water with Mio. But I, I rarely, 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 rarely drink, rarely. And don't really like to drink often anymore. Asked me at 21 and it was a whole nother situation. Now, this is a really good question. My question might seem kind of weird, but do you truly see keto as something you're going to do long term as in the rest of your life? Or do you think you want to hit your goals and ultimately change the way you eat in your lifestyle? Danielle, that is a really great question. I don't know. I think I'm going to eat this way probably for as long as my body allows it. I enjoy the way it makes my brain feel more than anything. So I think I will stay low carb probably for the foreseeable future. Not necessarily keto, but I think I'm going to limit my carb and sugar intake probably for the rest of my life just because it benefits me with my polycystic ovarian syndrome and I've noticed big changes in my mental health without adding sugar and breads into my diet. So I think I'll eat this way probably for as long as Jesus lets me. I think so. Good, really good question though. That's a great question. Hello, Ozzy friend. Uh, this is, ba her question is basically about tracking. It's long, so I'm trying to just like sum it up. I would say roughly my calorie intake is like under 2,000 calories a day. I would say roughly. There's days I go way over. There's days that I don't eat that much. I would say roughly I try and stay at or under 2,000 calories at or under 20 net carbs a day. I'm doing this with my hand. I feel like Donald Trump. How did you, this one is from Mindy Sue. How did you overcome your binge eating disorder with keto? I have also struggled with binge eating disorder and have seen a therapist. If, oh, have you seen a therapist? Um, oh, thank you for saying I'm beautiful. I'm glad you like my car karaoke. That's so funny. Uh, Mindy, I would say I overcame my binge eating disorder from years of therapy, years of therapy as a child that I didn't know would benefit me until I became an adult and used the things I was taught in therapy and like become self-aware and present and able to actually reflect on my own self and see what I'm doing to affect my way of eating, being, living, acting, all of the things. I would say um, therapy helped a lot, but also this way of eating satiated me. Ooh, it's satisfied instead of satiated. I think I tried to go for a big word there and I failed. This way of eating satisfied me in a way that I've never found. I've been overweight or obese my entire life. I have had every kind of diet. I have ate every single kind of way there is to eat except this way. And this is the kind of diet where I was like, oh, I don't, I can eat all these, I can eat. Like I was able to eat foods that made me feel really full and really satisfied. And that somehow turned off the binge switch for me. I also feel like when I start getting bingey, or I get that feeling of like, I want, I'm so sick of being deprived. I need the food, screw it. Cause that happens to me often. And especially when I'm going through something emotional or stressful, I tend to like re reflect, self reflect, write something down and just be like, why are you trying to self sabotage? Because that's ultimately what I'm doing when I binge is I'm sabotaging my own progress. And that I think is more of something that comes from my childhood and all of the things that I have accumulated in my life as far as like relationships with food and stuff. I don't know if I'm talking all over the place if this makes any sense, but basically when I feel like I'm going to binge, I decide to get grab a piece or two or three of gum, 
I get a big cup of water and I write down why am I feeling this way. And more often than not, I'm feeling this way because I'm emotional or I'm having a rough day or I had a great day and I want to celebrate with food. It usually all comes down to feelings and instead of eating my feelings, I decide to feel them, which is new for me, and um, move on and give myself a pat on the back every time I don't binge. So I would say celebrate not binging and that'll make it easier not to. I hope that helps. Live, love, plan, pray. My question is what is your ultimate currently or in the future goal for Ella? My ultimate goal for Ella is that she is able to care for herself properly so that she can live ultimately independent by herself and be a normal functioning person on the planet. I want her to be able to have as many life skills and as many skills that she can have or acquire to make her life the best it can possibly be. So ultimate goal is um, life skills, making sure she's able to care for herself, making sure that she's socially able to be around peers and that she's able to, because she is so smart and she is brilliant, her IQ is like whew, boom. I want to make sure that we're able to utilize that and that she'll be able to get a degree someday and do something that'll change the world. That's my ultimate goal for Ella. I know she will change the world. I just wish I kind of knew how so I could point her in the right direction. But that's my ultimate goal is to make her her very best self. So um, I would say self-care is the biggest thing for me with her. I want her to have as many life skills that we can give her, especially this young. That is my ultimate goal with her. Life skills. Life skills. So she can live without me. That's my ultimate goal, is making Ella able to live without me. Turn out so awesome, must have had amazing parents. I do have amazing parents, and that's why I am so awesome. My mom is amazing, my dad is amazing. Um, by my dad is my stepdad technically, but not really, he's my adopted father. Um, he's amazing, he's an incredible human. They both have taught me how to work hard, work smart, be kind, and just always do your best so I would say they are amazing people and they're the reason I do anything in life they're incredible humans also my babysitter Laura had a big part of that you're welcome Laura or thank you for making me so incredible also you should make me a cheesecake a keto one obviously but a cheesecake okay thank you and Megan Looney Harville oh I love her she's so freaking sweet when you guys are out in public and Ella starts to have a meltdown or is stimming, how do you respond? Educate rude ass people and curious children? Question um, mark. It depends on the situation. I would say if she's stimming, I'm usually like, yes, because I love if it's a good stim. If she's flapping, I know she's having a really good time. So I'm usually super, um, I would say I encourage her to stim that way because I know that she's excited so I would say if she's flapping and people are looking, I don't, I could care less because I know she's happy and it's so cute when you guys see her do it. It's like, oh, you're so cute. So I would say if she's stimming that way, I'm very like, yes, queen, flappy when you're happy, do it, girl. I would say if she's having a meltdown, I tend not to look around me because I'm so focused on her and I don't need to feel, I already know people stare because I stare if a kid's having a meltdown or if something's going on that's not the ordinary people look it's natural so I tend not to look at other people when she's having a meltdown it's way easier that way to not get upset to not get over hyped up and to calm her down properly if I'm looking at other people and like feeling them judge me then I don't I'm not able to give her the proper like skills to communicate with me and I'm not able able to properly communicate with her so that we can work it out and get through it we do, she does have meltdowns at certain family members' houses that tend to be stressful because it's family and you're just like, ugh, because you know, complicated out here, you know what I'm saying. But in the store, unless somebody says something directly to me or is rude or nasty, I, I will obviously defend this house. Like, I will defend my child until the death of me. But. If they're just staring, I don't, I don't really, I don't care. I could care less because people are gonna stare no matter what, always. But that's a really good question. Now, if you say something rude, but if a kid have, if a kid is, because kids are naturally curious. If a kid asks me what's going on with Ella, or, and they don't know how to ask, and it sounds kind of rude, I would never, ever, ever be rude to a child who is genuinely, like, 
not concerned but genuinely wondering what it like what's happening because I feel like that brings awareness to kids and if the kids are aware that kids or other kids can be different and it's not so scary and I am nice to them about it and I'm not aggressively biting their heads off because they're asking me a question um, they're more likely to be nice to someone else in a public setting at the playground at school that's different because then they're like it's cool to be kind that's always what I try and preach to kids so I would never ever be mean to a kid unless they were being mean to Ella I would never be mean to them about asking a question so I wouldn't I educate kids in the nicest way possible adults I feel like should know better but you know at the end of the day we're all human beings and we all do things that aren't politically correct or we're just human so yeah now that my mouth is drier than the Sahara whoo, my mouth is so dry it's mean to me talk like that probably not Oh well, I just wanted to like answer some questions, let you guys get to know me a little bit more, um, yeah, and I think tomorrow I may do like, um, like a cook with me kind of situation, I may make my taco skillet, that seems to be something that everybody wants to see, at least previously, before I had all these new people come in, but I may make dinner with me tomorrow, I don't know, I might just, who knows what I'm gonna do tomorrow, I never know what I'm gonna do until I wake up and I'm like, oh, maybe I should film that, so, you guys have been wonderful to me. I'm so excited to have you here on this channel. And overall, I'm just really excited to be here and I'm excited that this is turning into something I never expected and it's really, did I say excited? I think I did. I'm excited. I'm excited to go put my hair up because this stuff is driving me crazy. Overall, I love you guys so much and I'm so glad you're here with me. And um, no question is a dumb question. So if you have any questions and I didn't answer them today, Please leave them down below. Answer the best I can. Woo! But with all these new people, I can't keep up all the time, which is kind of overwhelming, but it's so fun. So, yeah. That's all I got to say about that. Um, until my next video, please make sure you guys like and subscribe. Subscribe, watch my latest video or any video that you want. Um, there's probably a little taste of everything on this channel that you can just kind of find. Maybe the recommended will recommend something for you personally. And yeah, let me know what you guys want to see from me. That always is super helpful. And I just, I love you guys. I love you guys. You people are freaking awesome. I can't do this hair anymore, you guys. I'm done. Ooh, that's kind of hot. I look like George Washington. Oh, well. I can't do this. You guys, to sit down and film a video, yeah, I have this really cute shirt on. And my hair's done. Homegirl's putting this up in a bun in like five seconds. And I got freaking leggings on okay this isn't real life i should preach real life and i'm like so today this isn't real real is in a bun with dry shampoo and um leggings on that's real and that's who i am and i like to be cute and stuff sometimes but this is exhausting so now that i've ranted i love you guys so much make sure you guys subscribe watch any video you want Tell me what you want to see from me, and I guess until my next video, I'll see you later. Love you guys. Never give up. Ever. That's so inspirational. I should write a song. You're about to get rickrolled! Me for this. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. Don't be mad, you just got Rickrolled, baby!